Hey everyone, we're going to be looking at designing our own custom table view cells. The first step is going to be setting up our models programmatically line by line. So in a lot of popular apps, you'll see table view cells that look similar to this. Of course, they have their circular profile picture, they have some text to describe what you're looking at, and then they even have something like a sub-label uh, to give you just a little bit more information. I'll even show you how you can mess around with how the cell changes when the user interacts with it. For this, I didn't like that the cell grayed out. Instead, I went with this little tab on the side here uh, that lights up when you click on the cell. Of course, anything you learn in this tutorial can be used however you want, and you can even implement your own design types. Without further ado, I'll show you how this was accomplished. So as you can see, I've gotten rid of the storyboard just like I usually do. Again, if you haven't seen that, I'll put another link in the description. Um, and I've created a new table view, uh, almost the same way we did in the last video, except this time I'm just printing the word success for the three cells that I've created. We're using this UI table view cell class which comes with a lot with it that you can use including this text label and it makes it really easy to implement a table view cell. What we'll be doing is creating our own class that inherits from this. All right? So in your own apps, I'm sure you guys already have your own data that you want to work with and that you want to fill the table view cells with, but for the sake of this tutorial we have to go and create our data. So before we can create any dogs, we have to create a dog class. And I'm going to go back up here and in this I'm Instead of doing a new file, I'm actually going to do a new group just to keep things organized. And I usually like to call it models. All right, so I'll just throw that down here to keep things organized. And within models, I'll create a new file now. Swift file. And I'll call it dog. All right, same thing. We're going to import the UI kit instead. Class dog. And our dog is going to have three variables. And those variables are going to be the dog's name. So var dog name of type string, var dog profile, and that's going to be of type UI image. That's for the dog's uh, profile picture. And then we're going to have a dog breed. All right, and that'll be of type string once again. And then to create our dog, or in programming language, uh, initialize our dog, we have to create an init. And what we want when we first create our dog is, of course, we want the dog's name. And I'll be of type string. We want to have the dog's profile. Uh, and that'll be a type UI image. And then we want the dog's breed right when we create it. And that'll be of type string. So really, all we need to do is say self dot dog name, which refers to this variable up here because we use self, is going to be equal to sounds funny, but dog name, and because we didn't use self, it refers in its scope to this dog name right here. So basically, whatever we pass in, we're going to say that this dog's name is whatever we passed in. Same thing goes for self dot dog profile. Um, this is going to be to whatever profile we give it upon creation, and then self.dogbreed is going to be whatever we give it to this initializer as well. So I could have used a struct because we're just holding some information, um, but I use a class because a lot of time in my apps, uh, I use a class even though it's just sort of like a struct, and I later on end up needing to create a function within that class. And so uh, that's why I use a class because later on I might need functions. All right, so now we have our class dog and we have its three variables to describe our dog. And outside of this file, we can create a dog with this initializer passing in uh, things to fill those three variables. We can go ahead, go back to our view controller and create an array of dogs. So I'm just going to say var array of dogs of type array of dogs like that is going to be equal to open parentheses and it gives us that initializer we're gonna call him uh, Jack and his profile image is gonna be UI image named uh, let's see going off of our assets here it's golden underscore retriever so golden underscore retriever 
All right. And his dog breed, which is a type string, is going to be golden retriever. And sorry, these actually have to be in brackets like this because it's an array. And it should give us a quick error about the image. Yep. And what this is, is it's saying that we're declaring this UI image with this name and our assets, but it doesn't know for sure that we actually have that image. And so all you have to do is add that bang operator to the end, which means, yes, I know for sure that I have this image. So go ahead and forcefully unwrap it. So that's our first dog. And I'm just going to copy and paste this to create our other two dogs. All right. Comma, space, paste, comma, space, paste. All right. So our second dog's name uh, will be Polly. And he is going to have a profile picture of Pug. So that's our guy up here, the Pug profile. All right, so he's a pug, and his dog breed, of course, is pug. And then our third dog, we'll call him Sparky. His profile picture will be the one entitled Husky. And his dog breed, of course, will be Husky. All right, while we're here, I'm going to say that the table views count. Yes, it is three because we do have three dogs, but just so it's smart enough to know and never crash, we'll say that the count should be array of dogs dot count. So now in our view controller, we have our array of dogs and we've created our class dog, but now we need to create a certain type of cell that is going to display the dog's name, its profile picture, and then its breed. To do that, we need to create our own custom UI table view cell, so not just using the default UI kits version. Again, I like to keep things organized, so I'm going to go back up to the top, do a new group, and call this customs. All right, and I'll put that just above the models. And then within our customs, we're going to do a new file, Swift file, and call it custom table view cell or you can call it that, or actually I'm gonna call it a dog cell, just so we really know within our code. That's our dog cell. All right, again, I'm gonna use the UI kit and my class dog cell is going to inherit a UI table view cell, like so, which means it should act and do everything that a UI table view cell can do but we're going to add on to it and change it a little bit. So the first step, and sometimes the most tricky to get a grasp on when you first do it, uh, is we have to create an initializer, just like we did with our dogs, but it will only accept an initializer that this class has already inherited from. So initializer, and we have to use the style and its reuse identifier. And right here you can see it's already giving us an error. If you just click here and hit fix, It'll give us this required in it. Not really sure what that does, but it always asks that I'd be there. And so we'll leave it there and let it be happy. Now you'll see if I delete this code here, it should get angry at us again because it's saying super dot in it isn't called, which means, yeah, we have this override in it to initialize something, but we actually haven't initialized something that meets the standards of this UI table view cell. So all we have to do is call super dot in it. And it's going to look very similar to that because that's what it needs to create. And we're just going to pass it the style that we pass in from our, U our view controller and our reuse identifier that we pass in from our view controller. And so all we have to say is style and reuse identifier. Lastly, you'll notice that I just used the word override because this initializer is just like the one that's in UI table view cell, but we're going to override it. Actually, we're not going to override it because it's going to look a little different when we say that to create this cell, we need a dog passed in of type dog. And what we do with that dog that's passed in is we create a variable called dog of type dog. And we will say self.dog is going to be equal to the dog that we pass in when we initialize this. All right, really quick, I'm just going to go back to the view controller. And these cells are pretty good spacing, but I want them to be a little bit taller just to really show off our design. And so if you go below these functions and you say height for row at 
All it's going to return is a CG flow asking us how tall we want the rows to be. And I'm just going to return 100 to give us plenty of room.